Lunch Hub Centers. <laughs> and guess what? Our very, we're hosting our very first Power Lunch here in Edina. And is this awesome or what, guys? Yeah. One more. Woo! Centers want to welcome all of you here as well as at all of our other six locations to Power Lunch today. I'm absolutely thrilled and honored. Our topic today is very appropriate, especially for people like me, <laughs> stress management. And I am honored to introduce you. Jim Trentup is the owner of a boutique employee assistance program. He primarily works with employers based in the Twin Cities. Jim helps employees deal with personal and workplace problems to improve their productivity. He also works with management and leadership and responds when a crisis occurs in the workplace like I heard yesterday, right? He's the president of the local chapter of the Employee Assistance Professional Association and has trained EAP professionals throughout the United States as well as Japan and China. With that, we are so excited about the topic, as I said. Let's all welcome Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, he is. My name is Jim Brindup, and I'm, I'm a counselor. I help people deal with stuff. And one of the big things that we get a lot is you don't want to do the stress. And it builds up, and it builds up, and they have problems because it builds up. How many here, though, show of hands, have been to a stress management training before? Oh, normally it's about five or six. Good, I'm glad you're here. Because when we're stressed, we sometimes make mistakes. We want to try to minimize those mistakes. I'm going to give you a little stress test right now. It's about five or six questions. It's repetitive, so bear with. So I would like you to answer quickly and with volume. Everybody, what color is this? White. What color is this? White. What color is this? White. What color is this? Three. No. Water. Oh. They drink water. But when you're stressed and you gotta come up with an answer, you might say something that hurts somebody that you care for, love, and then it, it's hard for you to say that you're sorry. It just adds to the stress. So the goal here is to actually come up with some techniques, and we're gonna go through 11 different ones uh, that, you have, that will help you reduce your stress. Make sure it's turned on. It side. is. All right. Technical problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just go ahead and click away. Okay. Yeah, look at the problems that, that exist today. There's uh, the economy, there's dual careers. When I was a kid, my favorite sound was the fact that I heard the squeak or slamming in the back of the summer because, man, I was home. My mom was home and I could, we could go and play all day. It's not like that now. If they have the things that I wanted out of life, but my wife wanted out of life, you know what? We end up being able to work. There's illnesses that we don't want. Can you just go ahead and put it down? There's reduction in force. There's layoffs. People have to deal with that kind of stuff. Just keep going. Waste tolerance. I remember we were in 2013. St. Paul was so proud. There's been only 46 murders in St. Paul that year. When was one okay? <laughs> but somehow only 46, so that's good. So we got this out and we found a way to survive, even though we're, we, we're used to it. Still sucks. There's a family separateness. Anybody here from uh, out of state? Oh, they're all from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I'm so impressed with some people that come here from other countries and they live here. And, wow, that's a long ways away from family. That's hard to do. So. And also alcohol and drugs that gets in the way quick. And increased workloads. Anybody have less work to do now than they did about a month ago? <laughs> or a year ago? It just it builds up and builds up and builds up. Go ahead. I want to read this to you because I, I just love the saying. The world is too big for us. Too much going on, too many drives, too much violence and excitement. Try as you will, you get behind in the race and fight yourself. That's a strange case. It's not. Science and the discoveries that you so fast that you slog up and leave them, and you won't close the wilderness. The political world is newsy and so rapid that you're out there trying to get case who's in and who's out. Everything is high pressure. Human nature can't endure much more. 
pretty uh, pretty common, right? Like June 16th, like 1833. That was written in the Atlantic Journal. We're survivors. We have found ways to just deal with it. But keep them to relax. That does have an impact on their bodies. But and who do you listen to? What are the internal voices that you listen to? Uh, according to the recognized aeronautical success, the bubblebee cannot fly because the shape and weight of his or her body is in relation to the total weight area. The bumblebee doesn't know this, so he she goes ahead and flies anyway. What kind of, who do you listen to in your life? What kind of voices are you listening to? Positive ones or negative ones? Do you know there's only two things in this world that you can control? Only two. Your thoughts, your behaviors, that's it. I now have been married 34 years. I can't make my wife stay with me. I can just try to be the best husband. She can't make me stay with her. She can just try to be the best wife. I can't tell her how to improve all the time. <laughs> and as we go on our journey together, hopefully we keep on making the right choices. But if I start focusing on all the stuff that I can't control, like there's another Brad Pitt movie coming out. She's got the hots for Brad. <laughs> if I focus on all that stuff, I'm going to go nuts. But if I focus and do what I do have control over, I can hold her hand. I can tell her I love her. I can put a note for lunch. If I focus on what I can do and I do those things, I feel strong, powerful, and valuable. When you take a look at the stuff that you deal with, how much do you worry and think about all the stuff that you have absolutely no control over? We'll talk about why we do that in a second. But, so stress is horrible. The release of uh, and, um, cortisone, and it gives it, when it gets stressed, it releases it in your body. And short term, it gives you the strength and the energy that you need to accomplish what you need to do. Long term, it's toxic to your system. It's poisonous. It starts to have an effect. It starts to wear your body down. Quick. Uh, if you're aware of it. Kenny hasn't spoken to me in six months. He won't return my calls and he goes out with all my friends. Should I break up with him? Some people just don't get it. <laughs> they go around life oblivious to what's, what's really happening and they are not stressed or they're so oblivious uh, and they're just so focused on their stress, it's just like either way, click. So I think it's important for everybody in this room to develop what I call your base, your B-A-S-E, your collection of your beliefs, your abilities, your support, and your environment. What are your beliefs? Do you believe that there's gonna be a positive outcome? Do you think that things are gonna work out? I, there's times I struggle letting go. And I uh, call up a friend who lives in Milwaukee, and he's been a recovery now for 35 years. I call him up, and I think it's because he helps me process things and let it go. And I can't wait to talk to him because I can't wait to end the call because he always ends our calls the exact same way. He says, Jim, it's going to work out. You may not like it, but it's going to work out. Things will eventually move on. They'll go on. They'll work out. What we do with it is going to be up to us. Uh, so what are our beliefs? Is the glass half full? Our, will things have a positive outcome? Will things eventually, will we trust that, do we trust that people will help? Do we trust that things will work? Do we trust that, what, even if it turns out bad, that we'll find a way to get through it? Or are we so afraid to take that next step and everything's so pessimistic and so bad that we're afraid to take that step? We don't want to move and we just worry about the rest of the world. It's kind of like you've got Velcro here, and Velcro here, and you walk around the life like this, <laughs> it's not a whole lot of fun. But some people do that. They believe that all, all the stuff is going to go bad. What do you do? And what did I say to control? I forgot. What did I say at the very beginning? What are the two things you can't control? Your thoughts. Your thoughts and your behavior. You have to remember that because your thoughts are your belief. If you believe that things are going to have a positive outcome, those are your thoughts that you're controlling. You can choose to say yes, it can be positive, and I'll find a way to work it. Or you can worry the entire time. Your thoughts also dictate your feelings. If you're thinking positive thoughts, guess what? You're going to be a happy camper. You're going to go around, you're going to interact well with people. If your thoughts are always negative, oh, people are trying to get me, uh, it's going to be, oh, it's sunny out, I hate the sun, or it's rain, whatever it is. If your thoughts are negative, guess what? You're going to be in a bad mood. Why do some people choose to be in bad moods? Why do some people choose to have those negative thoughts? We'll get to that in a second in a while. All I'm going to say is don't. <laughs> yeah. Do something positive. Because that positivity, once you embrace that 
And you are that positive person. People love that. Because they're not enough, there's not enough of it in this world. And they embrace that. And they want to be connected with you because you are that positive energy. Or you can be that negative energy. It's your choice. I love it. They hate that saying. Have a good day. Unless you choose otherwise. <laughs> so true. What are your abilities? What are your strengths? What, what, you, what can you do? What do you have? Do you have, do you have the abilities and do you use your abilities? Even in stressful situations. There was once when I was uh, driving home from Iowa, it's about a four hour drive. I was about 11 o'clock at night. I was tired. I just want to get home. Crossing the bridge on 35W between Burnsville and Bloomington. I'm in the middle lane and some guy in a red truck pulls up behind me and flashes his rights. And I think, well, something's been wrong. No, no, it's okay. I keep on driving. He still flashes rights. Now he's pulling up alongside me. He's honking his horn. It's raining. He got his window down. So I figured, this must be important. So I put my window down and and he yells out, pull over so I can kick your, and he gave the body. I don't know what was going on with him, and I said, what do I do, what do I do? I, do? I, do? So I resorted to my board, and I did turn the board, we we'll talked about it in a few minutes. What do I do? And the board replied to me, in my mind, well, Jimmy, you haven't been in a fight since, you haven't been in a fight since 10th grade, and that wasn't so <laughs> You could offer a hand signal, but that's not your style. I'm not thinking, you don't even know this person. Let him go, let him go. So I did, and he had to pull in front of me and slow down, or if I changed, I, mean, I was important to him that night for some reason. All I know is that I was going to act according to what I believe. I'm going to follow my values. At the end of the day, do you live life by your values? Is your yardstick, your yardstick, I'm sorry, your yardstick, your yardstick is made up of your values. You know, a lot of us have similar values, health, family, friends, music from the 60s and 70s. <laughs> And at the end of the day, were you that person? Were you the positive person? Were you the fun person? Were you the faithful person? Were you the uh, friend person? Were you that person? Measure yourself by your yardstick. Too often, when we don't like ourselves, we start using everyone else's yardstick. In fact, you get tired, carry it on. I'm just starting to your own. Also, though, with your abilities, the problem is sometimes you have to own your stuff. That's not always easy. <laughs> Many years ago, I was in the Cub Foods parking lot with my four kids in the van, driving along, hot summer day, and some lady with her two kids, one of the kids, darted down from the van, I slammed on the brakes. Didn't get the kid. But I said this lot, lady, watch your stupid kids. I wonder if we started to go forward, my son's in the back thinking, Dad, I love you, but they couldn't hear you because the window was down, or when the window was up. So he puts his window down and yells out, lady, watch your stupid kids. <laughs> So do you have your ability, do you understand what your abilities are and do you use your abilities, even when times are stressful, even when times are difficult? Just because it's stressful and there's other people putting pressure on it doesn't mean you need to react that way. In fact, here's where I become adlerian. I don't believe we are reactors. We are actors. We choose our behaviors. Behavior is purposive. We do things because we get something out of it. Do you have a support system that where you can just be you? Do you have someone that you can talk to and just be real? You know, we men tend to have the monopoly of one feeling, although women are catching up. I'm pissed. Because being angry is a macho, macho feeling, pushes people away and mission accomplished. It's rare that you hear a man say something like, I feel so intimidated and fucking <laughs> You're laughing at me, that hurts my feelings, I feel sad. We feel those feelings all the time, but we just tend not to share them because of the things that are vulnerable. So we use anger a lot. And I as a counselor when I'm talking to people. I had a guy in my office last week that was just angry about everything. And once we got through it, we found out there was some stuff going on in his life that was really sad. And he didn't want to be sad, he wanted to be angry. And then we sorted all that out. Do you have that um, person to help you? Whether it be tangible help, like if you carry books and somebody will open the door for you. Do you have that support system to say, oh, I'm right here. Oh, good job. Hey. How come when you walk in the office every day, the rest of your team doesn't get up to stand up and go, all right, glad you're here. Woo Why don't they do that? What about when you go home? Do you have that support? Do you have that embrace? Do you have that people that you, those people that you can talk to? You know, when I was, um, when I was a kid growing up, my ears kind of stuck out a little bit. Guess what my nickname was? Uh -huh. 
You grow up in Bloomington? <laughs> yeah. Somebody, hey, Dumbo. I, in my mind, it hurt my feelings, so I put up this little barrier. Hey, Dumbo. Dumbo, Dumbo. I built up barriers to protect me because I didn't want to feel hurt. And I, as a therapist, one of my roles is to help people break those things down, break those down so I can actually get in touch and have my support. I can feel my support. You need to have that. And if you don't have that support, oh, if you don't have any of the things that we're talking about here today, uh, if you have an employee assistance program where you work, please call the EAP. If you've got a mental health therapist that you know and, and, and you're saying, I'm struggling with my anger, struggling with this, please, if you don't have that support and you have a lot of these walls filled up, give somebody a call. And what's the environment like, both at work and at home? You ever hear somebody say, boy, this is so great, you can cut the tension with a knife. You bring in a knife to the wall. <laughs> Last week, that was fun. Um, <laughs> and about rules and stories. The rules. Well, in a lot of offices, we got a ton of rules. If you got a big HR department, you've got a ton of rules. Volumes of rules. But it's the stories. The stories that people tell within the rules that make it, that make the environment, that make the climate what you want it to be. Years ago, when I had all four kids at home, I had them all grown up at the dinner table. And I'd say, I'd go down the line. Well, I was school today. They couldn't say good or bad. They had to tell me something that they did. So I started with my 17 year old daughter. What did you do at school? Ah, we chilled. Apparently, that means something in 17 year old lingo. Went to my 15 year old son. What did you do at school? Well, we played basketball. Give me something. Went to my 13 year old son. What did you do at school? Well, we played basketball too, but we had breaks for lunch. Finally, we get to my 10 year old. What did you do at school? Well, Ms. Plum had to do this for English, and then for Harvard did this, and then for music we did this, and then for her two favorite words were, and then she couldn't wait to tell the story. And as she's doing that, she's building upon the foundation on which she's going to go back to school the next day. So when you come home from work and somebody says, well, gee, I was at work today, where are you on the continuum between we chill and at them? <laughs> it's your story. It's your thoughts. What are you holding on to? Did anything happen that was positive at work today? I hope you're fine with it. Because you know that there's a lot of people that are always finding all the negative stuff that goes on. Pat, don't point it up. Pat, they'll keep on rehashing it. If you let them. Sorry, I, I normally don't allow that. So I encourage you to establish your base so you've got a foundation upon which to not do some of these things. And um, I'm going to go over 11 different things that you could possibly do. Some of you have a handout, some of you don't. Um, but they're, they're up. Thank you. They're, they're on the handout. <laughs> And if you have any questions about any of these things, please let me know. Wait. Oh, I forgot this one. This is my favorite. <laughs> Learn to worry about one thing at a time. Sometimes we feel if we're busy worrying about a lot of things, well, I must be really worried because i got a lot of things to worry about. And when you worry about all those things, are you really effectively able to deal with anything? <clears throat> How many of you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning worrying about stuff? Raise your hand. Okay, remember I said I was at learning. Behaviors, purposes. How does that help you? What do you get out of waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning worrying about stuff? Because what it hurts you is you don't get the sleep that you need to deal with tomorrow's stressors. Yes. How does it help you? Okay, all right. I know. <laughs> I think we wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning worrying about stuff because if we're thinking and worrying like we're doing something about something that we have absolutely no control over at 3 o'clock in the morning. At some point, the healthiest thing you can learn to do is to let go. Learn to let go. I can't go there right now. In fact, if you ever wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, do what I do. Go to your happy place. Instead of worrying about all this stuff, when I wake up, and I'll be thinking about stuff. Oh, I got about, what about that project? What about the car? How can I do that? Immediately, because I can control what in my life, my thoughts and my behaviors, those are my thoughts. So instead of worrying about that stuff, I go to a campground here in Monaco, Wisconsin that I've gone to for over a day. I smell the campfire, walk on the trails, splash in the water. Within a minute, I fall back asleep because I can either go to my happy place and fall asleep, or I can go crazy. And you're thinking, oh, well, how do you do that? I'm going to ask everybody to lean back. Lean back to the like this. We get in the habit of doing things, and we just do them because it's 
so easy. We don't even have to think. Do me a favor, really quick. Hold your arms the other way. So actually, some of you did a really good job. Most people do this. <laughs> if you have to think, if it takes effort to do it, you tend not to do it. And I'm telling you, instead of worrying about all this other stuff, why don't you go to your happy place? You're thinking, oh, but I've worried about all this stuff for years. It's going to take some practice. It will take some practice. But the goal is for you to start getting control of your mind instead of being a victim. Start having some control because you can't control. That's where you have power. That's where you have power. Keep anxiety and focus on the real immediate issue instead of going all over and skipping from one to the next to the next. In fact, there are some people who are so good at worrying, if they don't have enough to worry about, they'll take on other people's causes. And as they do that, they get the gossip, they get involved in all that, they become a sad. The self-appointed mayor of the planet, you know. <laughs> And you're so proud to be in that position. You don't need to be there unless you choose to be there. Like, your mother and I don't know what that means, but we'd like you to stop. Sometimes we're worried about stuff just because we don't understand it. Instead of making the effort to understand it, we just go back to that morning because we do it so well. Click. And wouldn't everybody like that person like this in their office? One person designated. And they said, you're our desi designated warrior for the entire office. <laughs> Why not let one person do it? Because you don't have to unless you choose to. I'm asking you. This to maybe take some power back and start to own your stuff. Own your thoughts. If you want to worry about it, go for it, but it's not going to help you at all. It doesn't help anybody else. It doesn't help the people around you. But, oh, this is my favorite one. Focus on your senses a few minutes a day. Maybe even a few minutes an hour. We get tons of pleasurable sensations all the time. It's like when you get up in the morning and you have that that uh, you go outside and you have that air that's just so perfect. Like that, unless it's winter in Minnesota. But on a good day or in the summer, you smell it, it smells good. We get tons of pleasurable sensations like that all the time, but we're so worried, busy worrying about other stuff, we don't focus on that. But I encourage you to do stuff to get in touch with it. I carry with me this polished stone, it's going to just love the feeling. I have one in my pocket all the time. Uh, as a reminder of who I want to be, and it's just, it just feels nice. I gave a presentation once at a Native American conference. At the, con at the end of the presentation, the guy, uh, an attendant came up and said, that was a great presentation. He said, here, I saw a beautiful sunset last night. I picked up a rock to remind me of it. I want you to have my rock. I said, this is so cool. It was a stupid river rock. But it meant so much. And now I do my uh, the rock's way all the time just because I think it's a nice gift to share with somebody. But we get, um, I have vanilla candles in it because I love the smell of vanilla. Before I give a presentation, today is not any different. I, I listen to the same songs that over the last 10 years. Guess Who's song was uh, Star Baby by the Guess Who, Too Much Time on My Hands by Six, and Never Been Any Reason by Eddie's. By the end of the third song, I am just pumped. What do you guys do in your own world to get pumped, to have that energy? Anybody? Music. Use it? Yeah. Anybody else? Work out. Work out? Yeah, those people that run those uh, marathons. Boy, that's great. That, these runners. <laughs> oh, you don't, get, you don't get the runners high until after the fifth mile. Right. <laughs> but when you get into when you get in touch with your senses, it encourages you to focus on now. Focus on the here and now and the present. So you're not all over. You're not thinking about this. You're not worrying about that. You're focusing on now. And sometimes you want to just take a break at your, at your desk. Take five minutes and say, I'm just going to focus on my breathing. I'm going to get in touch uh, with my senses. And I'm going to make myself good. Number three, learn to talk what's going about you. We human beings are kind of like a pressure cooker. We've got all these emotions, it builds up, it's up, it's up, and a pressure cooker, you can have to release that valve. Or, things are the same way. We get all these pressures going on, unless we have some sort of release. Talking is the best way. And you need to be able to talk to somebody who can be real with you, and that you can be real with them. You can talk about the feelings that are going on. You don't want just a yes man or a yes woman. You want somebody who's going to maybe be honest with you. 
You want somebody who's going to maybe ask some questions and so you can finally feel some relief. Ever have that cry that after you're done, it just felt good? Sometimes. Sometimes. I, when I, my dad died uh, in 2004, it was like 2010, many years later, I'm driving up to the stop sign and he and I used to just laugh about it. It was such a stupid place for a stop sign. And I, I'm at the stop sign and I just start crying. Wow. Well, grief is, grief is powerful, but uh, it felt so relaxing after that. It was a, it was a good cry. Uh, it helps you get in touch with what's going on and helps you move on. Because I, all right, I processed that. I talked about those feelings. I talked about what's going on with me. I'm done. I can move on. Too often, we don't talk about feelings. We just try to avoid them or deny them they exist and stuff them down. And they're still there. You want to get rid of them? They're not because all you're doing is denying them. Denial is not a river in Egypt. <laughs> that was funny 30 years ago. Uh, click. Here you go. No matter how busy you are, you need to exercise. It creates favorable response in the brain. It's good for the brain. It helps push that stuff through uh, the, uh, the chemicals in your body. It helps run those through your body and, and, and makes your body pure again. Get your heart pumping. And you know, you don't have to go to the gym and you don't have to like run a marathon. Four times a week, four or five. Notice I'm not saying two or three, I'm saying four or five. Do something that's going to get your heart pumping. A brisk walk. If you're walking with the kids, you know, let them run up and run back to you as you're walking, but keep your heart, keep your body moving, keep your heart pumping. Uh, click. How about taking me on a walk and not one of those virtual walks on your computer? <laughs> Sometimes we try to find easy ways. We're human beings. We try to get by easy. And that sometimes that stuff makes us feel like we're doing something. Yeah. You need to get your heart pumping. Click. I didn't clear this with HR, so bear with. But take time to be touched. You know, I mean, we can break those barriers down that I talked about earlier. Break the barriers down, and we can be, whether we be emotionally touched, physically touched, spiritually touched, it feels good to be connected. I can be talking to somebody and maybe even having an argument or something, and I can, because I don't get many arguments, but I can be in a discussion, and my wife will come up and either put her arm around me or put her hand on my hand, and I'm thinking, our friend world, I'm ready to tap you. I feel connected. I feel connected. And I feel stronger, I feel more powerful, I feel <coughs> valued. <coughs> so what would be a massage? My kids, they don't get me about 10 years ago. So they got me a certificate for an hour-long massage. I think, an hour? Who's going to do that? Well, I had a bad day, I was playing soccer, so I said, I will, I'll go get the massage. An hour wasn't long enough. They are wonderful. You ever have the opportunity? Just go some I felt so relaxed, I never it. Felt good. Quick. Learn to speak a stress free language. When you think back on today, how many negative comments have come out of your mouth today? I want to know. Why not? I would encourage everybody in this room to start saying now. I'm going to start saying positive things. I'm going to see the, you know, look for the positives. And if something is negative, okay, let's not be surprised because there's going to be some negative stuff. But I'm just going to have a positive way of expressing myself going forward. Because you could choose to be negative, that's your choice, but then you'll have negative thoughts, negative feelings, or you can have those positive thoughts and positive expression. I have a little rules, three rules to go by when we're going to say Does it need to be said? Do. Does it need to be said by me? Three. Does it need to be said now? And if the answer is no to any of those, I'm just going to shut up. And you might find the people that I work with here don't think I shut up very much. But, <laughs> and it's your language. It's your, how you're going to choose to express yourself. You're going to talk about hope. Oh, you're going to be that positive. Things will turn out positive. Things will be okay. Things will work out for all of us. It's a self talk that I give myself. It's a tape that I'm going to start playing from this point forward. July 25th, 2019 is a good day to start being that person. 
Speaking of that person, go back to your 20s. Remember that person that would walk into a room that they just lit up the room? They'd walk in, they knew how to walk, they knew how to talk, they knew how to dress, they could dance, and they didn't have to be in the center circle, they could even dance on the outside because they were comfortable with themselves. Did you hate them? <laughs> I remember up until I was age 24, I was so threatened by them. I would spend hours trying to cut them down to get other people to say, I don't like because of uh, what any reason I'm so threatened by that until I realized at age 24, Jim, Jim, you want to be that guy. So instead of pushing them away, why don't you pull them in and learn what they're what he or she is doing? Well, did my life take a change at that point? I decided not to be angry anymore. You know, I haven't sworn since 1978. Just decided I have that optimistic uh, approach. Chose not to. I chose to be positive. I want to be that person. I want to be that that positive influence. Do bad things happen? Yeah. Do I have some negative comments occasionally? Yeah. I'm not perfect. Oh, my, my wife thinks so. Like, <laughs> okay. don't be so serious. Oh, there's that bell girl again. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. Loretta, Loretta LaRouche, in her presentation, she's just hilarious. She said, why do people always have negatives? There's times when we have to be serious when we're working or at home, there's serious stuff that happens. But not everything. She said, take for example, you have a message that you want to share everybody, the copier doesn't work. So the copier's not working. She said, learn to add a twirl, people. The copier's not working. <laughs> Same information, but you know, that positive. You, I think it's the term I had on the last one there. You can't dance and stay up tight. Everybody here is out of sight. Dancing in uh, Moonlight. That's a song by King Harvest. Do you have any recent music you listen to? There's no need for recent music. <laughs> My wife likes country, the leading cause of suicide today. <laughs> and I'm just thinking after 1978, there's no need for other music. <laughs> Also, uh, my son, when he was in high school, was a gamer. A lot of gaming. And I asked him on New Year's Eve, right there, that was a couple days before New Year's Eve, hey, Mike, what are you do for New Year's Eve? Uh, we're going to go see a ventriloquist. Mike, get involved in the world. You're going to go see a ventriloquist on New Year's Eve? Oh, dumb. I didn't say that to him, but I said, oh, good. A couple months later, I had the winter blues, February. Kind of down, watching the comedy channel, and up pops Jeff Dunham's movie, Arguing With Myself. If you've never seen that, rent it. I have not laughed that hard in years, and I could sense it as I was laughing, and I was shaking, I was laughing hard. As I was laughing, I could feel the tension just go away. Learn to giggle, learn to laugh, have those people in your life. Yeah. What people do you have in your life? When you take a look, the folks that you hang out with, are they negative or are they positive? Are they encouraging or are they demeaning? Are you enjoy? And that's the word that I use a lot when I'm, when I'm happy. And a lot of times when we get stressed, we, we lose the word joy. We don't feel that joy anymore. We don't enjoy stuff. We just do. You know, I ask all of my clients the following question. You know what you want to be when you grow up? 85% say, I don't know. One of my all-time favorite sayings is, if you don't know where you're going, then you will to take it. If you don't know where you want to end up, it really doesn't matter what you choose now, because it doesn't matter. But if it does matter, now you know what to say yes to, and just as important, what to say no to. If you want to be happy, negative thoughts just don't belong there. You need to learn to say no to that. You need to maybe do something a little bit different. And you can, if that's what you want to do, because you can control your thoughts and your behaviors and how you move forward. Fire those voices of negativity. I want you to imagine in your mind a nice thick cherry wood board director's name. Not the uh, G stuff they have here. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you have at that board? Quick. Who do you have on that board? Oh, yeah. 
Who do you have sitting there? These are people that you get power to. You get permission to influence you. You get permission to give them direction. They give you direction. For example, on my board, I've got my uh, my wife, I've got my God, my wife, my kids, my brother, my sisters, my late parents. I've got a mentor, spiritual director, three friends, and Kwai Chang King from the TV show Kung Fu. <laughs> Two episodes before church every Sunday. I just love it. I, there's so many points in there that are just wonderful. But that's my board. There's some people that try to be in my board, like that guy that was um, uh, driving behind me and was just upset with me for some reason. He was trying to be in my board. My board said, you know, I run. I like the apprentice. It's fire. Don't give information. Or I encourage everybody uh, to have me like that. My nephew gave me a saying when, I was, when he was only six years old. He's now like 26. But I've been using it ever since. I said, hey, look, can you go to this woman? He said, I'm the gentleman. I love that saying. People can say something. They can even, I, I've had two coaches. I drive stop them. And I can have both coaches on the field yelling at me. And I heard the coaches, and I don't say this, but I think, I'm not doing it. I made the right call. I'm going with it. Didn't want to give them permission. But that's my board. Who's on your board? Do you have positive people on your board? Might you have somebody negative in your life that for some reason they've managed to get their way on your board? It's your board. For some reason, it's there. I've had parents that didn't have fired their kids because their kids were into drugs and stealing stuff and demanding money. I've had kids that had fired their parents because parents were so negative. It's your emotional board. Who do you want to have on it? You may have your parents if you didn't want your parents on there, but they don't have your emotional board. They can be fired. And I want you to know there's always people in this world that are going to try and control you or trying to have that control because that's what they want to do. You live in Minnesota, you can go to any store and eight people will help you. Two of them might work there. That's Minnesota. Um, anybody from St. Paul? Go to St. Paul very often? Well, if you ever go to St. Paul, you go north on Highway 15, there are two of the longest left turn lanes to get out of that Veterans Christ. They're about a block long, 20 cars each lane. And one winter day, cold February day, I was in the far left lane, so I had it. Not an option. And I had 10 cars behind me, 10 cars in front of me, I had 20 cars to my right. And all of us were going to turn left. Guy behind me haunts this horn. I look up in the mirror, he's doing this. He haunts this horn again. I look up, he's doing this. I have no clue what he He haunts. The third time, I look up, he's doing this. So I get out of my car, and I walk back to his car. He puts his window down, and I said, sir, can I help you? He said, you don't have your blinker on. <laughs> this guy must be exhausted by the end of the day trying to run the rest of the world. Do you have people in your life that are maybe trying to control? And then you can, it's always, you're always able to draw the boundary and say, you know what? I'm not going to. I'm going to, I'm going to put it. I just want to talk about boundaries. So people push against the boundary. I'll say, well, please don't do that. But sometimes stuff might be going on. We have death in the family. We have other trauma going on. And our, our boundaries are really close to us. And if people push on it, we take things personal. And that's when I will have the ability to talk to somebody and deal with this stuff. Click. Number nine. Don't say you get away. Even if you need to, if you're at your desk and you need to have that five minutes or you just want to go to your happy place or you need to go for a walk, just I need I need to draw a boundary here, I need to get up, I need to remove myself, I just need to breathe. Breathing can be really helpful. I don't know if you've uh, ever been, had an anxiety attack. I think I've had one in my life. There's this bridge between um, Maryland and Delaware that I was going up. I'm scared of dead lights. Going up, and I just kept on going up. And suddenly I'm thinking, I can hear my heart. This is good. I'm, I'm sweating. This is, this is not. And I'm on a freeway. This is not good. So I said, breathe. This gym is what you tell your clients. Just breathe. Focus on your breathing. So I focus on that one thing that I could control, and I did that. So if you're ever getting stressed, whatever you're doing, focus on something that you do have control over. Like you. Uh, wipe this like clean for a few minutes. You're going to learn relaxation techniques. Could be prayer, it could be meditation, anything that works for you. It could be good music from the 60s and 70s. <laughs> or 50. Or 50. Or 50. Or 50. Or 
all watching my own at Metrics XM. Anyway, wait. Think about this one good thing that's happened today. There's lots of good things that happen every day. Why don't we hold on to the negative stuff? Why don't we just keep on focusing on that? And let other people want to focus on it, focus on it. And you just focus on the positive thing. What are some really good things that happen to you? What are some things that you did for other people? And when you get good at it, coming up with one thing, make it two. And then make it maybe two things an hour that you're going to focus on, that you're going to bring up and highlight or compliment other people on. Because you can compliment people, but they may not compliment you back. Can you control that? No. But I'm not going to let that person dictate whether I'm going to compliment people or not. I'm going to still do what I believe is right, because I live life by my yardstick at the end of the day. When I look in that mirror and say, Jim, were you the person that you wanted to be? I'm hoping to say yes, be that person tomorrow. Because you do become your self talk. What is that? July 25th, 2019. It's a great day to maybe start being positive. It's a great day to maybe start moving forward and making some of the changes. Uh, click. Nutrition is necessary. I don't know if you've noticed, but for those who are watching, I'm, I have lost about 25 pounds in the last month and a half. I had a little health scare that made me do it. But it feels really good. Nutrition, you need to have nutrition. And I, I changed my eating style, and I'm actually eating stuff that will, except for today. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, where was I? But I also changed, and my son brought this up like many years ago, and I'm living it now because I need to, but I wish I would have listened to him years ago. He said, Dad, if you ever just want to lose weight, don't eat to be full, eat to be not hungry. I said, how smart is that? He was only like in the 11th grade. Good for him. Good for him. Too much to have, uh, too much to be bad, but the, the better the grade. If you ever want to make that change, if you want to start feeling better, I encourage you, if it can possibly come through a drive through the window, you don't need to step through the pocket. <laughs> but if you come through a drive through that stuff isn't all that good for you. Start being nutritious food. If you want to feel better, exercise, have those positive thoughts. Click. Okay, all of you have that little handout. I have listed 11 things. There's actually a ton more, but I just put those 11 down. Pick three. Don't try to do the whole list because you're just going to be lying to yourself. Pick three. And out of those three, what are two things you can do for each one today, tomorrow, and the next day? Is that I'm going to start making some of these changes. I'm actually going to make these changes in my life because I want to feel better. I want to be better. I want to be happier. I want to be stress free. Let me rephrase that less stress. When I played soccer last night, I can't wait for the opening whistle. I get so excited in, in a way that's, that's stressful, but it's called you stress. It's a positive stress. Distress is the negative stress that you get by having too many demands on you. So pick three and identify two ways you can act. Choose it because you can choose your thoughts and your behaviors. You're going to choose behaviors that you can act on immediately. And I'm hoping that the staff here is saying, be nice to Jim, is on that list. I'm hoping. Click. And don't get frustrated if you're not immediately perfect because the road to success is always under construction. Okay, so you're not going to be there today or tomorrow, but you will get there because that's the goal. That's what you want to be. And I'm going to finish up with that saying that I said earlier, you know what you want to be when you grow up. I'm talking not just career-wise. I'm talking physically, spiritually, emotionally, relationship-wise. What do you want to be? And I think that you always ask your significant other, how can I help you become the person that you want to be? And this is what I need from you to become the person that I want to be. Are you willing to help me? But then we can work on that together as we go on our journey. I wish you well on your journeys. Thank you much for your time today. co-working month and we have something going every day of the week. So we want you to participate and have some fun along with us. 
On Mondays, every Monday in the month of, uh, the month of August, we are going to have BOGO Mondays. That means you sign up for a co-working membership and you get the next month for free. Number two, we have work free Fridays. You can bring in your kids, your well, you can show your family, your colleagues, and even your doggies to our very office center every Friday and work for free in our co-working space. Then we have none other than our Office Center's branding marketing specialist, Will Dazdani, right there behind the camera. He is going to be taking headshots head at various locations throughout the month, and he's going to make it to all of them. With the grand finale being on the 26th at Pop Day at Woodbury, and you're going to be providing free photos with your dog. So that's good job, Will. You're going to be a busy boy. And then we start our events. Thursday the 1st, we're going to be kicking it off at our office center networking from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock in the morning. We're always crazy the road. That one is quite nine years strong with a big group. Come see us there. On the 3rd, we are, that's a Saturday, and we're sponsors at the Shaver Shuffle, 5K, and you can shuffle or rock. And our basic girl zero is there and would love to have you cross the finish line with her. She's threatening to need to be carried, so we all have to be there to support her. Um, then uh, the grand opening, huge event back here on the 6th of August. Everybody, that's a must attend event. It will be a huge group. We have ribbon cutting, foods, drinks, music, and all of the above, and an opportunity to collect, connect with our members as well as guests. So come, come to the hottest party of the summer here on the 6th. The 7th, we're co hosting a women in networking event, a clothes swap. On the 13th, we are fishing for life. Actually, two events on the 13th. One is fishing for life, and that is going to be we partner with Jesus of the City Club and Fellowship and sponsor a fishing boat on Lake Minnetonka from 7:30 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. And you can race right over to Minnetonka Office Center, where we are for the first time ever hosting a huge networking event with the accelerated global connection through AGC. And there's lots of opportunities. That's going to be a networking on the front side, networking on the back side, and an awesome speaker for 15 minutes is going to come in. Her name is, she's a collegiate, she's a collegiate athlete, she's a sports broadcaster, entrepreneur, and she's going to be speaking on Play to Win, Discover the Wins that Mean the Most. So that's going to be a free event. We're expecting 75 plus attendees at that event. And the list goes on. The 14th, we're going to be at Park Apple Center from 10 to 11, listening to Jasmine Stringer. She is a member of ours here at Edina, and she's going to be talking about podcast, podcast questions that she will be answering. The 20th, we're going to be at Slice of Woodbury. That's turning into a huge group, and that's a, if you want to go to the east, the other side of the river, that's a must attend event, too. I of support there from the Woodbury Chamber, and almost a huge group. Usually have 25 people that register and 45 that show up, so it works out slightly. Like on the 22nd, we are going to be right back where we to park for a power lunch. We're doing it a week early, and that's going to be Magic Brass speaking on the magic of experiential marketing and live events. And then we're going to be back at on the 26th, as I mentioned, that's going to be Doggy Day. It's National Dog Day, and we are going to be having fun raising the roof with lunch, beverages, giveaways, and again, we're going to be taking photos there. So. Please join us. The list, the list goes on. We like to raise her up and have fun. We really appreciate the fact that y'all are all going to come and do a good list, right? Right. Thank you. All right. So everybody have a great day. Again, thanks, Jim. It was awesome. We really appreciate it.